all about humanity. Ladies and gentlemen, yeah, today is Friday. Let's go. TGIF, ladies and gentlemen. It is Friday. So for those of you who have the weekend off, congratulations. You made it. We're gonna, we're gonna step into the classroom and we're gonna talk about the things that happened today on April 29th on today's day in his story. Yeah. In 1,429, the French national heroine Joan of Arc and her troops entered the besieged city of Orleans during the Hundred Years' War. That's heroin, not heroin. This young woman led a revolt against her country, and yet the United States of America took 500 more years to give women the right to vote. Nothing wrong with this picture. Nah. In the year 1770, British explorer James Cook made his first landing in Australia at Botany Bay. I have a friend named James Cook. It's true. I do. We're going to listen to one of his songs later on in the broadcast. As a matter of fact. We are. Yep. I hope. We are. In the year 1899, American composer, band leader, and pianist. I said pianist. Pianist. Why is everybody laughing when I say that? Duke Ellington. Among the most significant figures in jazz history, was born today. Happy birthday, Duke Ellington. In 1916, about 10,000 British troops surrendered to Ottoman Turks at Al Kut, Iraq, following a five month siege during World War I. 
In 1936, orchestral conductor Zubin Mehta was born in Bombay, Mumbai, India. Happy birthday, Zubin Mehta. In 1945, the U.S. 7th Army liberated tens of thousands of inmates at the Nazi concentration camp in Dachau, Germany. Good job. In 1954, comedian Jerry Seinfeld, whose television, tele, television, television, hey, can we watch some television? whose television show, Seinfeld, was a landmark of American pop culture in the late 20th century, was born in Brooklyn, New York. Happy birthday, Jerry Seinfeld. Can we talk about the fact that I can say the word Zubin Mehta? I can say Ottoman Turks. I can say heroin. But I can't say the word television. In 1991, a tropical cyclone struck Bangladesh, killing an estimated 140,000 people and causing 10 million to lose their homes. That was 31 years ago. In 1992, riots erupted on the streets of Los Angeles, California, in response to the verdict of a highly publicized trial of four white Los Angeles police officers who were acquitted of charges related to the 1991 beating of Rodney King, a black motorist who had resisted arrest. In 2015, in what was thought to be the lowest attended baseball game in Major League Baseball history prior to the pandemic, the Baltimore Orioles defeated the Chicago White Sox 8-2 in an empty Camden Yards. Baltimore. The game was closed to fans because of rioting in the city following the death of an American man african-american man who was fatally injured while in police custody in 2018 the animated tv series the simpson the simpsons aired its 636th episode surpassing gunsmoke to become the longest running scripted primetime show in the United States. And today's event of the day, as voted on by my belly button lint. Thank you. Thank you for your vote. In 2011, Prince William of Wales, second in line to the British throne, married his longtime girlfriend, Catherine Middleton, in a lavish ceremony broadcast to millions and millions of television viewers. It's true. And just as a side note, I'd like to say happy birthday to Michelle Pfeiffer, my fantasy girlfriend. GG, winky face. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, the past is the history. The future is the mystery. Today is a gift. 
That's why we call it the present. And today is April 29th, and we celebrate some really good things on April 29th. It's true. National Zipper Day commemorates April 29th, 1913, when the patent for the modern zipper was issued. The day celebrates something we often do not think about and may automatically take for granted. The first attempt at creating the zipper came from the inventor of the sewing machine. In 1851, Elias Howe received a patent for the automatic continuous clothing closure. However, Howe never marketed his invention and missed the recognition he might have received. Happy birthday, zipper. Today, come in close, stream. Chat, come in. Come in close to your beast mode. Today is National Shrimp Scampi Day. April 29th gives us a tasty way to celebrate. On this day, we honor the delicious dish of shrimp cooked with butter, garlic lemon juice and white wine scampi is a culinary term for a small lobster known as nephrops also known as langoustine or dublin day dublin bay prawns and which is completely unrelated to this day Ladies and gentlemen, each year on April 28th, National Peace Rose Day honors a well-known and fruitful garden rose. I said Peace Rose, not Pete Rose. We don't celebrate cheaters. Pete Rose, get out of here. It's Peace Rose Day. The light yellow to large cream colored flowers of the Peace Rose have slightly flushed Crimson pink petal edges. Try saying that shit while inebriated. It is a hybrid tea rose that is a hardy, vigorous, and highly resistant to disease. That's good. Guys, you've seen them out on your journeys. When you're driving to your local Whataburger in and out or McDonald's and you look around and how many signs ladies and gentlemen how many signs have a sign to let you know that there's a sign there right hysterical marker I'm sorry historical marker one mile historical marker take a left it's down there how many signs have a sign to let you know the sign is there. Well, today is National Historic Marker Day. Historic markers all across the nation provide a glimpse into the past and preserve history for future generations. On the last Friday in April each year, National Historic Marker Day invites volunteers and communities to come together to maintain their markers. Yeah, thank you. During National Poetry Month in April, National Poem in Your Pocket Day shares the way poetry brings joy by simply carrying one in your pocket. 
When you share the poem, you'll bring joy to others. I don't know about you, ladies and gentlemen, but I got a lot more than a poem in my pocket. You know what I'm saying? It's National Arbor Day. Arbor, not harbor. For you guys in Boston, no, it's not National Arbor Day. National Arbor Day! Park your car in Harvard Square! We're celebrating Harvard! We're, we're celebrating Arbor Day! Arbor Day! No. It's National Arbor Day, ladies and gentlemen. Arbor. Trees afford us many pleasures. Did you know that? In the spring, their buds let us know warmer weather is on the way. Their summer leaves provide ample shade on a hot day. Have you ever joyfully jumped into a pile of crisp colored leaves in the fall? You know you have. I did it one time. I jumped into a colorful crisp leaves in the fall and I found a damn rake in there. Somebody thought they were funny. Now I have a rake scar on my rear posterior for the rest of my days. All because of Arbor Day. Thanks, rake. Guys, can we get serious for a moment? Today is a very important day. We try to bring awareness to the world's problems on this stream. We try to reach you one person at a time. And we do our best to bring the biggest issues to you. And that's why it's really important for me to bring awareness to National Hairball Awareness <coughs> <coughs> Day. Ah. Ah. Cat lovers have all been there. We've all been there. Uh, if you're not a cat lover, if you're if you're a bearded man lover, same thing. The onerous sound that your cat or bearded man makes when a hairball is on the rise. On the last Friday in April, National Hairball Awareness Day draws attention to a problem many cat lovers and beard men, bearded man lovers faces. Yeah, that's true. The formation of hairballs is a common feline and bearded man condition that is brought on by self-grooming and the associated ingestion of hair. Yes. Cats and bearded men pass the hair through their digestive tract and then will vomit the hairball. If they don't eliminate the hairball from their digestive tract, one way or the other, hairballs can create an obstruction and they'll get flagged like in the NFL for 15 yards. No, obstructions can cause serious medical issues, both for the cat and the bearded man. It's true. Yeah. It's damn true. And ladies and gentlemen, it is time for our joke of the day. A cabbie. That's right, today's joke is about a cabbie. A cabbie picks up a nun. She gets into the cab. And the taxi driver won't stop staring at her. She asks him why he's staring, and he replies, I have a question to ask you, but I don't want to offend you. She answers, my dear son, you cannot offend me. When you're as old as I am, and have been a nun as long as I have, you get a chance to see and hear just about everything. I'm sure there's nothing you could say or ask that I would find offensive well I've always had a fantasy to have a nun kiss me she responds well let's see what we can do about that shall we number one 
you have to be single. And number two, you have to be Catholic. The cab driver is very excited and says, Yes, I am single. And I'm Catholic too. The nun says, Okay, pull into the next alley. He does, and the nun fulfills his fantasy. But when they get back on the road, the cab driver starts crying. My dear child, said the nun, why are you crying? Forgive me, sister, for I have sinned. I lied. I must confess. I'm married, and I'm Jewish. The nun says, that's okay. My name is Kevin, and I'm on my way to a Halloween party. Did you know? Did you know that 3% of all the Antarctican glaciers are constituted of penguin urine? 3%, that's right. That's right. This is because this is because the penguins they, they excrete up to 100 milliliters of poop and urine per day. Per day, per penguin. That's right. I bet you didn't know this. But now you do. You're welcome. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury... Wait, what? No, we're not on trial. It is my honor to talk to you about James Cook. No, 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 no. Not the guy that was finding places and landing on Bombay, uh, whatever, Bombay Bay or whatever it's called today. No, not the, not the huge famous explorer. No. We're talking about James Cook, the tremendous songwriter. That's who we're talking about. We're going to play a song today called Wake the Dead. Here it is. You guys should listen and enjoy it. Words flow from his wasted mind. She wrote a letter there, changed his life. Ah, graceful in the air, you can hear her with the crickets in the night. Pay no attention to those chills and your smile. He's careful with his footsteps On his way to the bed He knows better than to wake the dead Our dogs keep shutting something Coming from the hole, it seems He's closer to the edge Than he cares to be Hell, he knows She's a believer in Jesus and his play. He'll do right with what's left of us. And he knows everyone says she is gone. I know there's no such thing as ghost. No such thing as ghost. Oh. No such thing as gold, 
no such thing as gold. Oh, there's no such thing as gold. Oh, He's carrying crosses, he's whispering prayers. He's weary from the haunting and the night's cold air. All revenge runs deep in the center of the living room floor. He's ready for the thunder, she's coming with a roar. Oh no, and he knows she's a believer in Jesus. And his play, he'll do right with what's left of the sins. And he knows everyone says she's gone. And he knows there's no such thing as ghost, no such thing as gold. Oh, 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 no such thing as gold. Such thing as gold. Oh, 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 no such thing as gold. Gentlemen, that was James Cook. A song called Wake the Dead. If you're watching on the YouTube, I thank you. This has been It's Beast Mode. I think number 17. Thanks for watching. Like the video. Subscribe to the channel. Comment down below what you would like to see Beast Mode talk about in the future. Beast Mode out.